By the way, yeah, Fractal Fox works on a e EEG classification, which is that thing where they measure the, like, the electricity in, uh, uh, how, how, what is the proper definition of it? By the way, they do some, something with, uh, with the electricity that is uh, going on in your brain. And um, yeah, he, he's into neurofeedback research and does uh, software for non-invasive computer vision-based wildlife identification, which is a very cool thing, I believe. Yeah, this was your biography in a couple of sentences, made very, very badly. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so... Oh, hello? Ah, perfect, okay. Yeah, so please give him a big round of applause for his uh, talk. <laughs> Yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining the session. Um, yeah, I, I put some uh, crappy description of what I'm actually doing. Uh, so the wildlife thing is actually a, a separate project. Um, <laughs> so but I'm, I'm basically doing a EG BCI research. And um, yeah, and so this is um, what I actually want to talk about. Because recently I felt like I was uh, waking up in the future. I mean, because we have all this new technology right now happening. Uh, like re rejuvenating cells, um, what is it, uh, open, <laughs> open AI, like driving cars, self-driving cars, everything. Um, just like it's, it's tangible almost. And um, so now we have brain-computer interfaces and uh, also made affordable and to the point where you can say it becomes reliable actually. And uh, yeah, so, but of course, always with new technology, there might be some people who want to misuse it and so like there's a great responsibility coming. And um, so I know th this place here, I find probably the most uh, progressive uh, people around technology. And that's why I want to yeah, share this uh, update actually, update on the BCI progress that we did uh, already last year with uh, Metamind and Masahiro. And uh, yeah, all right, <laughs> so let's get started. Um, so yeah, this is basically <laughs> where we want to head. Um, Okay, so, but, yeah, I know a lot of people probably know something about, or know maybe a lot about PCI, but I have to be fair and just give a little introduction first, um, so for the people who don't know. And, um, yeah, then I will talk, um, of course, about the challenges or things that um, actually are going to be relevant. Um, and, yeah, I'll also give a view over the consumer devices that are cu currently available and all the open source uh, approaches right now and okay so yeah here we go uh, bear with me this is just the, the basics right now um, I try to keep it short so what is EEG? EEG is basically it's electroencephalography you have this um, you have this uh, beautiful plot here the, this is um, actually what we can measure on the surface of the head and uh, that's what um, Hans Berger and the 20s uh, found out you can do it also with humans. Uh, so you put these electrodes and somebody's closing the eyes and then he opens it and you have a totally different pattern of brain waves. And uh, so yeah, it's a non-invasive non brain imaging method and it's probably, uh, yeah, one of the uh, best known, so to say. And okay, and uh, so yeah, this is like maybe a typical um, uh, mount, so you have like um, electrodes and you place them in a certain uh, certain areas um, that correlate of course to brain activity and uh, different um, areas of the, of the brain and then you get this um, signal um, and uh, so basically it's you can interpret it as how how many times a second uh, does a wave go up and down and then you can do an analysis on this you have the frequency analysis for instance that's something um, that's being done um, quite often actually um, and uh, so what, what else can you do? You can do the unmix the signal and then you, for instance, have, you can uh, determine the arousal state, like so how awake are you? Are you um, almost falling asleep or did you just have like a bunch of coffee and uh, yeah, like this kind of uh, scale you can, you can see here, this is the, the typical scale. Um, of course, there's also different activity. Uh, and uh, yeah, so basically we can do so much more actually with this um, uh, in com combination also with machine learning, of course. And uh, 
So, um, but let, let's just have a slight um, a definition here, um, just to, so you can see like the basic um, difference or um, how we can operate actually a brain-computer interface. So like this is, Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the end of it? <laughs> no, joking. <Yeah. laughs> OK. Sorry. Hello? Ah, OK, all right. Um, perfect. So yeah, OK, so like three um, basic um, well, yeah, way to d differentiate. Uh, we have active. active uh, uh, brain computer interface where you, um, for instance, uh, think about your left or right, right hand, and um, of course need some training, and then uh, uh, yes, you can directly control the device by thought. Uh, that's one approach. Then you have reactive, where you show certain stimulus. That means so you show um, show something like maybe a, um, something visual or something auditory, and uh, you have a certain reaction. And uh, then also you have passive ones. Those are the ones that you probably won't notice much. Is kind of um, tweaking your user experience, um, and so you probably won't even notice them. And uh, yeah, so this is like a very um, basic, uh, very basic, um, uh, yeah, circuitry of uh, brain-computer interfaces, where you have the user, and then you have uh, the electrodes. We do amplification. I mean, this is a very sim uh, simplified um, approach right now. Then the filter, AD converter, and then we send it uh, to a software. We do some pre-processing because, of course, we also have a lot of noise in the data. Um, then we really look for the data that we can use, the feature extraction, and then we have some machine learning algorithm that can uh, run a command based on the interpretation. And uh, okay, so wait. Um, yeah, so um, as I said, so it really depends on where I put the electrodes, and there's so many possibilities actually here. And this is only a crude map, of course. Um, so, but yeah, um, for instance, um, spelling computers is something uh, very nice, I think. Uh, so you just see maybe a screen with all the with the alphabet, and uh, so the letter you're thinking of, maybe the, the line is then highlighted, and so we can measure actually. This is then the the letter you're th uh, thinking of is actually the target stimulus here in this um, P300 scheme, and then uh, this is like a different reaction. We can really measure this. Uh, to anything else, like anything that's not the, the letter you're right now thinking of. Um, and of course, yes, uh, so maybe you saw already also the videos where people uh, are, uh, can actually control by thought uh, uh, exoskeletons and prosthetics. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and next, something that's um, also now very popular for, um, yeah, also for the commercial um, consumer products is the uh, neurofeedback. And uh, so what, what is basically is you um, can learn, you can really train uh, your brainwave activity. And, uh, and um, so the way it works is you, we constantly measure actually your, the brainwave data, then we um, do the processing and we have an interpretation. Uh, is this going near to uh, the state of um, well-being you want to be maybe? Then we give, a, in this moment, we give a reward. So. Uh, and this, uh, the reward is a sound, and then you say like, oh, okay, that was the sound, uh, this is great, and your, your brain tries to reproduce this sound. So at the same time, you're changing your brainwave activity. And um, yeah, okay, here I brought some samples, uh, examples, this is more maybe for clinical and uh, medical use, of course. Um, but yeah, um, so that's the hacky thing. Of course, you don't have to be sick to use neurofeedback. You can still optimize your brainwave activity. and. Uh, yeah, um, so, and then also for artists, it's a nice thing. Um, it's easier than never to make an inst uh, interactive installation where um, you can have an audiovisual feedback. Uh, maybe you can design it, it's just the nuances of your arousal state, and also maybe in, in combination with um, somebody you're doing it together with. So it's a whole new, uh, it's a new experience, it's something new um, that you can really feel. Uh, so I tried. Uh, so we did. I did a similar um, setup also at a, at a sorry at a festival, um, and it was quite interesting with two people. 
and uh, yeah, I can really say it's something special and yeah, worth, uh, sorry, um, really worth trying. Um, so and then neurogaming, so this is basically the gamification of neurofeedback. Um, so also there was the second conference on neurogaming already in San Francisco this year. Um, okay, and then there's this new approach, uh, not so new approach, but now new approach in consumer. Uh, the consumer landscape is um, to combine EEG or to use TDCS, uh, transcranial direct current stimulation or um, transcranial um, alternating current stimulation, um, which is uh, basically zapping your brain. The problem is there's not much, um, there's no long-term st studies so far. I mean, people say it's nice, they say, wow, um, <laughs> I feel like I drank a bunch of coffees and I'm so active, okay, but um, I don't know, but, uh, can, you, can you do it without? Is it something that lasts? Um, it's not so sure. Um, so yeah, there are some scientists also who say, uh, yeah, you can try it out, but you should be careful, definitely, what you're doing. You should be knowing what you're doing. Um, okay, so maybe just give a quick overview. Um, the, the methods, this is not all of them. This is just a, the ones uh, I found interesting here is the P300, was, that was the one where you respond to a uh, to a certain um, stimulus, the target stimulus, and uh, the spell computer, for instance, um, and uh, there's no learning involved, really. Then we had the um, steady state, visually, visually evoked potentials. Um, this is where you can, for instance, have a, a blinking light in a certain frequency, and you will have, um, you can actually read this in the occipital, so in your, in your visual cortex, you will have a certain response to this. And uh, so this is also maybe an example example of a reactive um, VCI, then we have slow cortical potentials, um, SMR, uh, motor imagery, um, this is again the, the active one, and yeah, this is um, yeah, also quite a uh, good one. Um, so, okay, um, but yeah, let's, let's just have a quick look at the uh, consumer devices right now, um, and uh, first, okay, we should clarify what are we looking for? What, what would be the criteria to say this is a good device or this is a bad device? Um, so I just thought of a few points, of course, depending on what you want to do, they might be different. Um, so, but of course, the first thing is cost. I mean, so you maybe don't want to waste uh, $50,000 and then say, oh, wow, okay, um, I can control, make a robot go in the circle and the other one and, oh, wow, nice, $50,000. Um, so, okay, maybe a little less, and, uh, but what's really important is the specificity and the reliability. So you don't want to buy some stuff and, um, and uh, see, oh, it's all, it's just, uh, it's noise in the data. So like, I mean, you should ask yourself, is really brainwave coming out of this thing? Um, so I'm not gonna point uh, a finger at any um, commercial product right now because I only have 10, um, but so like, um, it's really, <laughs> It's, it's really um, something you want to look at. It's really the essential thing. You want to have clear data, uh, clean data. And um, okay, so the next thing is the, the hardware and software deg degrees of freedom, so to say. Um, um, this is then more, of course, interesting for hackers, I guess, if you have the chance to uh, change some parts, uh, change electrodes, and uh, of course, what's also uh, essential then uh, to have the raw data access. And, uh, and then ergonomics. I mean, you don't want to waste 10 minutes um, trying to set up your EG uh, VCI device, um, not maybe even 30 seconds, that really sucks. Because like every time you want to try it, um, <laughs> at night, uh, at some point uh, during the day, and, and then you, you fiddle around the whole time, and then it's like, it's a turn off. You don't, you don't want to deal with this the whole time. Um, well, of course, yeah, depending on what you want to do. Um, so, and then one important thing um, is the product safety. And uh, security, so safety, I would say, of course, you don't get electrical, uh, you don't get a shock from the system, there's not a um, dead circuit or something. Um, and security, I will come to this later, this is also one point. Um, and uh, okay, so just, yeah, I know this is, um, this is just a few devices I picked, there's no, um, so to say, um, uh, yeah, just like the, yeah, right now popular ones, uh, but there are also other ones, of course. If you do some research, uh, the NeuroSky MindWave is kind of, um, I think, popular. Um, 
does a good job and has good connection. Uh, I mean, it's easy to mount and uh, and they at least uh, have a hardware DIY guide. This is nice. Um, then the Emotive, I was working with two years, but I was kind of uh, the, the epoch and I was kind of annoyed to put this to other people's head actually, because yeah, if those people have a lot, a lot of hair, uh, you're really sitting there uh, sometimes 10, 20 minutes and the, the guy's asking like, what's happening? I don't know, nothing's, <laughs> nothing is really, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Am I waiting for something? Yeah, the electrodes, yeah, it's not really working. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's also, again, as I said, a turn off. Uh, but I'm really, um, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious about the inside. I think it's uh, uh, actually just launched. And the Intrax Muse also looks like a legit headset. Um, Melon I put here, I couldn't, um, so they couldn't give me the, the data sheet really, but it's also very affordable. Um, all right, so, um, okay, so wh what is the, the progress? So if you st look at the devices, they all have dry electrodes. That means not like it used to be, uh, you have to put gel to have good uh, conduct uh, conductivity. It's different now. Um, uh, so like dry electrodes, but the problem is um, you have to make sure you really um, uh, you get a higher, higher impedance and then it's very sensitive to, to noise. You can really get noise very easily. So you have to think about the um, design of your circuitry. And of course, yeah, the, the algorithms get better and it's um, something that um, improves, of course. But um, if the signal is bad in the beginning, um, sometimes there's not much you can do. And uh, yeah, then you don't have a working VCI actually. Um, oh, okay, that was one too fast. Uh, <laughs> the, okay, so then let's move on to the open source um, DIY. Um, and uh, so, yeah, um, so of course the time's a little bit too short to, to um, go in detail about the hardware setup, but uh, we're gladly gonna help you guys. If you uh, come by, we can um, talk, on, talk on the details of the um, hardware implementation really. Um, but yeah, and also I, um, now just um, pick like a few devices uh, again um, that are projects that uh, either have um, like a tutorial how to do a device for yourself or that already offer maybe um, like a kit or something that you can really start um, during, new, uh, during VCI. Um, okay, so um, here just um, the list and the Open EEG project I think is, has been uh, this is quite popular. This has been online for a long time on the SourcePodge page, and they're doing a really good job. They also have a lot of tutorials there, and um, so. And then they say it's like something between two hundred and four hundred dollars uh, to have um, to build this device by yourself. But then you also have a company that basically um, um, assembled this all in the box, um, and uh, and then also um, yeah, probably. Um, also heard about the openbci.com project. This is um, where you can really 3D print also um, the EEG or PCI um, device. And, uh, and uh, you have um, a different uh, approach also, more electrodes, um, but also like one with four. Um, and then the, the openbci.org, um, the one that comes from, from Metamind and Masahiro, and uh, uh, with over 30 years of research. And um, this is also one um, yeah, can be stacked and uh, the, the amount of electrodes and we uh, can be used uh, either with uh, Arduino uh, Uno or you can use, basically you can exchange also the microcontroller here. Um, yeah, so but yeah, what, what is the, the core difference? What is, why would you either pick the one or the other? Um, so again, it really depends on what you're planning to do. Is it something you want to do at home, some simple setup or you want to make uh, research, low budget research, so to say, you want to have um, holistic recording with um, a lot of el electrodes. Um, so you have to think about that. But um, so like maybe one core difference is also the AD converter that Masahiro picked for um, the Brain Duino. So you can use it uh, actually better with dry electrodes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's more, um, it's actually easier to start with it um, due to the setup. And um, yeah, okay, um, just maybe then a few words to the electrodes because this is the thing that you cannot, um, um, I mean, you didn't have with the consumer devices, um, um, but like with, um, 
with the um, hacker devices, you can really just say, okay, I want this or that. Um, the very, um, something that is also in the scientific realm, you, you have the, or like a standard is the um, electrodes, which are like a cup and then they're basically the material is um, something like um, silver, gold, or tin. Um, then you have a big difference is um, passive and active electrodes. So passive means um, <coughs> I just make, I have an electrode and then goes maybe over wire and then you have the amplification, but on the way, um, it's a problem that you maybe get some signal noise also because of electromagnetic fields, for instance. Um, the active electrode on the opposite is you amplify the signal right after the electrode, and um, which makes a better contact then and better signal. Um, okay, and then also something very new, you have um, bendable ele electrodes. I saw a publication, I think this is also coming up. So something very ergonomic. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, and also you can, you can hack um, electrodes. Uh, you can just take um, some silver coins and solder them to a screw and then uh, connect it. Uh, works perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, and then software. Um, so I only also picked a few, of course, um, there's much more, um, but like OpenVic is one of those that's quite, um, uh, has been there for a long time also. And um, you have a visual editor and you have all the machine learning and all the filters there also. And um, like a lot of tools. And uh, yeah, BrainBay is also, unfortunately only for Windows, but um, um, then Neuromo is also new software. Um, it's not open source, but it's free to use. Um, so yeah, but I, I would suggest for the beginning or you have maybe some other toolboxes for, for MATLAB if you do it like in the research field. Um, but open vibe is always a good thing to go, I think, um, the beginning. And so one, one important thing I want to talk about um, is uh, really privacy issues. Um, uh, maybe still it feels like it's an early stage, but if you think about it, if, if brain computer interfaces become more popular, like you know, used, used to be like Fitbit maybe or something like that and now it's, you quantified the, the body, now you quantified the mind and becomes popular, then you should ask yourself, um, what happens with my data, with my brainwave data? Because um, there's actually some things uh, that you can do with it. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, just t um, take a look at this um, titles here. Um, so uh, the headlines and bri brainwave privacy standard is needed to prevent spying on EG data, sc uh, scan data, Re research is one. Um, so, mm, okay. Um, Buffins proposed brainwave privacy standard, EG data can predict illness and app makers are storing it in the cloud. I think, wow, that's shit. I don't want that. That's really something I want to um, prevent. So I think it's, um, it's a critical time that uh, we should actually um, get in uh, uh, get a uh, conversation and uh, dis discuss this really um, because um, yeah <laughs> I don't know where this this could be heading I mean I'm not overly paranoid but um, you, as you can imagine there's a lot of things you can really um, use here uh, misuse and uh, yeah so basically something about health conditions cognitive performance um, and then of course there was also a publication talking about um, achieving with the consumer device uh, they found out the PIN code, ones of birth, lo locations where you know, or people you actually know. Um, so all this data can be actually compromised. And uh, yeah, so you have different stages of attack. And um, of course, what we can do is with the open source um, community, we can, of course, um, look if, if there's something maybe around the device, uh, may maybe we can check out, um, we, we can do a, um, we encrypt the brainwave data before we send it, but, um, Okay, um, no, it's, it's gonna be hard anyways, but we should discuss about it any, um, and uh, yeah, so, um, so again, I would say the privacy standard is really something essential, uh, it's something we, uh, sh that should be discussed, and, uh, um, and then, uh, yeah, so, um, then this is something that, uh, where I really want to also that's why I'm here also to, to discuss with, um, with you guys if, if um, there's some approach that um, we can make a safer brainwave experience in the, in the future. Um, 
and yeah, so um, just come by by the neuro, neuro hacking space, and um, yeah, we can discuss. We, uh, you can try out the device. We have a lot of devices there from um, all, all sorts of um, all the the consumer uh, the um, open source devices we listed were, are actually there, and um, yeah, try out, um, test, and then if, if you want, if you want to hack something, uh, we're glad to help you. Um, and answer all your questions. And yeah, again, as I said, so maybe you also have a good input for, um, so we can kind of go on with the privacy of brainwave data. And um, yeah, and also for the for the Brain Duino project, um, there's going to be a Kickstarter. We want to make it more affordable. Um, yeah, also if you want to participate, um, yeah, just come by <laughs> again. Um, yeah, but that's basically it. Uh, thank you for listening. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, questions, right? Yeah, there is already a question from the internet, so please go. Thank you. Uh, first question, do you know of any plans to regulate the whole technology, devices that send waves um, and have the capability to, uh, you know, tamper with your brain um, shouldn't maybe be easily to, to be allowed? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, the problem is sometimes you, um, I mean, the consumer market then, uh, so like, okay, um, I will repeat the question. Um, so is there any way to, to um, Yo, Sorry. shut up. What? Okay. Uh, uh, so, is there any approach? Um, so I would say the problem is always the disclaimer, uh, like um, mouse, um, like very small printed things, um, um, and then you, you're not sure on the con if you're a consumer of a uh, yeah uh, if you're buying consumer product. Um, so f from that point, it's quite hard, I think, to to regulate at this point, um, but. Yeah, I don't know if there, if there would be like a standard, like um, like a read data standard um, and a safety standard, then maybe um, this could be done. But of course, there are so many steps where you can attack this, actually. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite a complicated um, topic. <laughs> um. Uh, there is a question yes. on the microphone yes. in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, you had the slide at the beginning where you outlined the basic uh, flow of the data when it uh, first it was analog, taken from the brain, then uh, changed to dialog data, or di uh, di digital, sorry. Um, uh -huh. And uh, there was a filtering process. Before that, my uh, question is, is there a uh, um, direct uh, advantage of filtering the data before changing it to digital data and what sort of filtering is done there? Is it just a band pass or is there something else? Um, it actually, um, so I mean this was a quite simplified um, graphic um, because we have also uh, different kind of am amplifiers before um, or instrumental um, but um, yeah so um, this is, it makes sense before you send it um, further, um, but yeah, may, maybe uh, if it, if you have the time, maybe you can come around and we can um, show you um, like some detailed um, schematics actually and try to explain why why is this makes sense at this point. Um, but yeah, also I mean if you if you don't want to come by, it's all online. I can show. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. Uh. Um, to my left. Hello? No? Yo, there Hello? is a question in there. Hello? Oh. Okay. Uh, about the Epoch headset, uh, y there was a small bullet point mentioning that it uh, has a raw data hack. Could you please elaborate? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if this, I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if you, if you uh, look in a search engine, you, you can, um, I mean, it's quite easy to find. Um, it's also on GitHub. I, there are some forks of it, and um, yeah, it's actually quite easy to use. Um, but yeah, okay, <laughs> it's <you>. possible. <laughs> yeah. 
Hello. Uh, you were talking about also um, the dangers and the misuse that can be done with it. The dangers and the misuse that can be yep. done with it, with the system. Um, there will be misuse. You yeah, know right. that it will come. Yeah, I mean, it's part of it. So how, as a scientist, do you yeah, work with that? You know, you, yeah, on the one hand, you clearly know that it's good and all the good things that come out of it. On the other hand, it's a very, very powerful technique. technique. I think um, people should be able to decide by themselves if they want to share their brainwave data or not. Um, and every action I do before this, I want to make sure 100% that it cannot be com compromised. Um, I think that would be um, like maybe some opt-in if you can say, okay, I'm fine. I put my raw data online in the cloud. They can use it for, um, for analysis, for like cloud analysis. Um, yes, uh, definitely, it's a, it's a powerful tool. Um, but yeah, I think it should be opt-in. There should be no compromising before that step. Do you also believe that it will, sometimes, you know, in our society, we, uh, we have the brain and the heart, you know, and we take, separate it. I don't know why, but this happens. Do you think it will lead to us um, getting brain and heart closer together again? I mean, once, you know, sometimes you don't know what you're feeling. Uh, you know, you, you can't describe it. Do you think that that whole technique can help? Well, I mean, so basically, I mean, how, how I think about neurofeedback, for instance, is um, it's like meditation with guidance. So, um, like all, all the, like the, the research also going on with meditation, you know, kind of, uh, bring into the core what, what does it really do, what, how it change your brainwave uh, chemicals really and in a, in a profound way. And I mean, with this, with this um, I mean, what, what's following this is that um, you become more aware, of course, uh, of your surroundings. So maybe in a way this, this, brings, this brings closer together the heart and the mind, so to say. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank so you. there is a question to the microphone at my right. Yeah, I think um, PCI is quite interesting, but since it's an, in it, it's an interface, I'm interested in whether there are any methods of inducing brain waves instead of just me measuring them. Imagine a world in which you think of something and you get a um, Wikipedia article directly in your brain. It would be quite interesting. Um, yeah, so like, this is the... Um, I mean, there are different approaches right now non-invasively, but in a way it is invasive, you have the TDCS. Um, but, um, I mean, so, the problem is y you don't have like long-term research on this. You can, you can be your own guinea pig, of course, you can uh, buy the devices and just um, check it out, what it does. Um, but so like this is, you know, like forcing brainwave activity. The other thing, I mean, I, I try to explain the neurofeedback is really, um, it takes some time, but, um, there's like, depending on what protocol you're using, you can regulate also, you can change brainwave activity. And um, the, the great thing about it, it, it stays the way. It, so it's not like, um, so like you're really building new bridges in your brain. Um, I mean, the same with TDCS, but it's not forced. And the problem with TDCS also, it's like very unspecific right now, at least. It's like you're firing in every direction and um, changing something forcefully. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, sure. There is time for one last question from uh, the Signal Angel. Thank you. My question from the internet goes along the lines of the last question. Could you elaborate a little bit on the brain wave training part? Um, what's the status? Um, what are the benefits? Um, yeah, so I mean, it, it's used right now, um, uh, for instance, to um, like ADD, like uh, attention deficit disorder. Um, it's an alternative to, to Ritalin, uh, Ritalin, you know, that's like, a, basically it's an amphetamine that they're giving to children, and um, so it's very harmful for the body, um, but instead you can do neurofeedback training, actually. Um, and uh, so, I mean, of course you have to do some practice, and maybe you have to do also some follow-up practice, but in the long run it, it helps you with the situation in a very good way also, and um, you don't have to take chemicals. Uh, yeah, I'm super sorry for you guys, but we're running out of time and I've got to oh, cut it short. Sorry. So, yeah, thanks also, a lot for the talk. Yeah, also you can just come by. <laughs> <laughs>